Welcome to the Anthropocene, a period of geological time defined by the impacts of humanity. As humans have a far greater impact on our planet than most of us realize. In many ways, we've become a geological superpower. And I'm going to give you some examples because I feel that as a scientist, as a communicator, these are facts that people need to know. We move more earth, soil and sediment than all the natural processes put together as we start to destroy our beautiful planet. We have made enough concrete to cover the whole world in a layer two millimetres thick and that does include the oceans. We have made 300 million tonnes of plastic every single year that end up in our oceans, in our fish and even in our own blood. There's a plastic bag that was found at the bottom of the Marianas Trench, seven kilometres deep in the northwest Pacific. The only shame is it did not have Walmart or Tesco's on it. There are now more non-recyclable Lego minifigures in the world than human beings, and there's 7.9 billion of us. Actually, I think most of them are at my house. <laughs> We have cut down three trillion trees. That's half the trees on the planet. We use 25% of all land for our agriculture and our settlements. And probably the most stunning fact that always shocks me whenever I give it. If we take the weight of land mammals, 30% is us humans. There's a lot of us, and some of us are overweight. There's also 67% is our livestock and our pets. Just 3% are those beautiful animals that, of course, David Attenborough films for us to enjoy on our sofa on a Sunday night. Just 3%. We're also changing the climate. Greenhouse gases are now higher than they have been for the last 3 million years. Global temperatures have already risen by 1.2 degrees and we're seeing the impacts all around the world. Severe heat waves, droughts, wildfires, floods and storms, all compounded by the relentless rise in sea level. So, welcome to the Anthropocene, the geological period of Earth history caused by humanity. But hang on a minute. Not everybody is guilty of this rape of our beautiful planet. I'll give you an example. 50% of the lifestyle carbon emissions are generated by just the 10% richest in our global society. While the poorest 50% generate less than 10% of those emissions. It's even worse if we think about money. There are, let me do it, nine billionaires that own the same wealth as the bottom 3.9 billion people. Half the world. I'll repeat that. Just nine people. 825 million people go to bed feeling hungry every night in a world that produces enough food for 10 billion people. There's only 7.9 billion of us. One in 10 people survive on less than $2 a day. Excessive consumption is killing our planet. But maybe there's some good news. World leaders have pledged to keep global temperatures to significantly below 2 degrees and to only 1.5 degrees if possible. But to do this, we will need to be net zero by 2050 and we will have to have reduced our emissions by 50% in nine years time. If we do not deal with climate change, the hard-nosed economists predict it will cost us a large amount. And guess what? You can already hear the fossil fuel lobbyists and the climate change deniers whispering in your ear going, it's too expensive to go net zero. It's too expensive to save the planet. So what do those hard-nosed economists say? Well, it cost us 20% of world GDP by 2050. And just think how large the global economy will be there. 
The infrastructure changes needed will cost us less than 1% of world GDP, and the downdraw project that's brought together all the potential solutions have showed that decarbonizing in the most effective way possible, we could save $46 trillion because of all the win-wins that will occur. So if you hear those whispers, kill that myth now. So dealing with our environmental crisis will require governments, corporations and individuals all to work together. Governments need to regulate, enforce, tax, subsidize and most importantly, lead. So what should governments do? What is on my wish list of things that they should be thinking of? Support renewable energy, no brainer there. Tax fossil fuel use, cut fossil fuel investment and subsidies. Global subsidies over the last 10 years have averaged about a half a trillion dollars per year for us to have fossil fuels when we're trying to get rid of them. They can support walking, cycling, electric cars, public transport, and my favorite, trains. <sighs> I just tweeted to actually say, just imagine if you had a US that had high speed train network at bullet speed trains across the whole country. You wouldn't need to fly anywhere. Governments can also build low carbon infrastructure and also for this government, enforce building regulations. We can reforest, rewild our land. We can promote low emission farming and plant-based diets. We can plan and adapt to a changing climate to protect the most vulnerable people in society. They could consider universal basic income and universal basic services, but that is a subject for another talk. I also get asked, what can we as individuals do? Because many of you, like myself, suffer from climate anxiety. The idea that we are powerless in the face of so much destruction of our beautiful planet. And I have the first rule is talk about it. Because I have seen the power of being able to talk about our anxiety and our crisis. I have seen and I've worked with billion dollar companies that have gone from zero to hero in five years. Why? Because people talked about it around the coffee table or around the water cooler and they said, we feel this is something our company should do. And they did. We can all switch to a more plant-based diet. We can switch to renewable energy. We can walk and cycle, use cars less and fly a lot less if at all. We can divest our pensions, if you're lucky enough to have one, from fossil fuels. If you happen to have investments or you in can influence your company, then move your investments away from fossil fuels. You will thank me in the long run because guess what? Stranded assets will mean that they will be worthless in a couple of decades. Reject excessive consumption. Do we really need fast fashion? Do we really need all that stuff? One of the outcomes of the awful pandemic that we've been through is we all realized what mattered to us. Hugging our family and our friends, being able to talk to them, being social. That's what being human means. We're an ultra social creature. We need this sort of collective. We need these interactions. We don't need an extra pair of trainers or 14 pairs of sort of like glasses or sunglasses to look really cool. What we need is friends, family. Consumer power is real, okay? Put your money where your ethics and your morals are and get other people to do so. Vote for politicians that care about our planet and its people. Protest. Glasgow was amazing. The power of people there was so vibrant. The diversity, including age, gender, ethnicity, social class, were all represented on the Friday strikes and then on the Saturday protests. There is a huge ground swelling around the world of people crying out for change 
because this is our planet. We have the scientists, we have the experts, we have the community groups, we have the justice leaders, we have indigenous peoples, we have the business leaders, we have the entrepreneurs to save our planet from ourselves, for ourselves. What we lack are politicians with a long-term vision and a commitment to make our planet safer, healthier, wealthier places for everyone, not just the few the very rich view.